they they learn it almost essentially organically um, through you know composition through scales um, the much the same way as you and I now learn language so um, for instance when we're young um, we we first learn how to speak usually through our parents through our mother and father um, and as we as we grow let's say from two from the age of two to five um, we may we may start you know the first initial steps of speaking of learning how to control language um, but really nothing is it's all through a it's all through imitation but B um, nothing's really written down at that point it's very it's a very conversational aspect and this is how the composers of this generation um, have did learn how to speak let's say um, because they were conversationalists on on those instruments if you can give them an idea on those instruments and they could just they could simply elaborate they could simply have a conversation with someone else or with themselves um, and those tones became essentially a conversation just much as uh, we can con construct sentences um, fairly flawlessly um, nowadays just in normal speaking those n the note stage from which they started from probably I believe occurred close to but after the initial stage of understanding conversation uh, understanding tones as conversation um, and again using this analogy of of, conver of learning how to speak um, you don't really write until you're probably about I don't know five five years old four or five years old and for the same reason um, the compositions that they did often came after um, it was always from the sound first to the note and never from the notes to the sound uh, which is the way it's done now um, so these these people um, these composers uh, essentially learned a language in which they could uh, they could freely express themselves they could they could move they could play they could improvise uh, for hours on end uh, without any problem nothing of which most comp uh, most performers or graduates from you know music programs can do today, um, they could compose obviously um, compose not just in the style that was given them, but also you know seek innovation, which is an important aspect. Um, they could perform, of course, because that was a requirement. Um, and on to to add on to these three things, um, in 1725, Bach wrote a treatise basically on on how to teach thorough bass because this was an important aspect. Um, th playing continual parts essentially. Um, the, th the five things he outlines was were, were those ones that I've mentioned so far. So composition, performance, uh, improvisation, and there's uh, thorough bass, which he he goes into quite deeply, and also um, tuning, which is another aspect that uh, was probably more important for that generation than ours because of, you know we've largely solved temperament and everything else, but. Um, those other four are, are still there. Um, you see that only one of those is performance, and the other th the other three are um, are well, uh, you know, creative tasks, uh, creative tasks and comprehension tasks that that are much harder to to judge. Um, now, going back to the 1830s again, which is an important date. Um, the mo the reason why I say I say so is because at this date, you really have the birth of of the classical tradition that we have, that we we come from now. Um, and I just want to preface that with with kind of sketching a picture of um, the social environment that this is occurring. I mean, it, at that time, again, in the heat of the Industrial Revolution, you have this uh, large rush of innovation happening. Um, you know, the cotton jenny was built and you know, Napoleon and everything else, and the whole world is, is run amok. Um, but one of those, you know, one of those great things that have come out was the piano and the ability for the piano to to project and all the technology that, you know, cast iron could provide. Um, what was so great about this is that, um, a lot of reasons was that for the first time ever, you really had a, a magnitude of pianos and, and almost for a, a large population, um, were able to afford pianos that hitherto were not. Um, uh, so what happens here is that uh, the best 
uh, you want you want your piano to make sound, right? So the best way to do that um, is not to teach each child to become a composer, but to teach to formulate a system, a fast system, to um, to get basically the best music into the hands of you know these people to get the fastest results. Okay, um, and what the method that they did for that was to create a, a performance method essentially. Um, so people like Clementi were very, and Cherny were kind of like the forefathers of this performance method. And basically, their concept was to take you know notes written from the quote unquote great masters. So probably Beethoven at this time, and uh, to put put it onto sheet music and you know give it teach these kids how to play this music. Um, the benefit of something like this, and the great thing about it, is that by the time this kid or this child you have is about 10 or 12, you can, if, if you know, with the proper course of study, they, you can pretty much expect all of them to be at a certain level. You can expect all of them play. And can you imagine the the impact that that would have? I mean, to hear a 12-year-old child playing Beethoven, um, you know, in your living room, that's, that's unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, and that really was a great thing. Um, so uh, all these, these pedagogues created this method. Um, I just think of it as the 1830s method um, to, to get music into the hands of, of uh, people at home and to play it as soon as possible ASAP. The method is largely paint by colors. Um, the method is, so, is performance-based, first of all, um, and basically reads verbatim the uh, the notes from the score and er, and performs those notes from the score um, yeah uh, that uh, idea was both revolutionary at the time I would at and at the same time um, uh, you can it kind of signals the end of uh, of kind of signals the end of um, the creative uh, uh, flourishing of some of these other, you know, schools of uh, of teaching, more based on language, um, because really, with the with the publishing empire pushing basically for, you know, these composers to push out music as fast as possible because they're they're making money and the composer is making money, and the piano retailer is is happy because they're selling many pianos and. The children are happy because they're, you know, making their parents happy, and the, the parents are happy because um, they're hearing, you know, great music like Chopin in in the house. Um, it really signals the death toll for that other form of instruction, which I actually think is is much better and is essentially the core um, reason I'm making this podcast. Um, so really, we have uh, in that period a lot of reasons. Uh, to start pushing this new method, uh, in which place which places performance basically at the forefront um, as the only essential real art um, involved out of those four or five that that we hear Bach mentioning, um, and this method uh, catches on fire. I mean, it really it takes us all the way through to the 1900s and further. I mean, that that method. Gets institutionalized into you know the great, um, the great centralized educational systems, and you know we have all these conservatories of learning and everything else, and they all stem from that period um, and not before. Um, so for basically 150 years, we have, or more than 150 years, uh, we've been following this tradition. Now, um, one look anywhere today in, in basically in the post-secondary institutional system or a conservatory or just the general musical learning, you see a lot of these kids still playing the same thing. So like Beethoven and Mozart and, uh, you know, Clementi and Haydn and Scarlatti. Um, and this is both good and bad. I mean, you see, you see that they are playing this and the technical facility, which they do it with is, is quite remarkable. Um, but um, the way I usually posit this question is just that to ask what what happens, um, let's say five hundred years from now, are we are we really going to be recording 
you know, Beethoven's Violin Concerto like five times a year from the, the newest, the five new prodigies that come out every year? Are we, are we really going to be listening to the same, the same music? Um, and if so, is any new music going to be